so good. And we're grateful today to remember, oh God, to recount everything.
flowing like a river. Your love is better than life, given up my mind. One day, maybe your heart will never doubt in this way. Your love is better than life, it keeps on. Come on, church, step into that river. Step into the presence of God. Engage in worship this morning. No spectator, but everybody as a participant. Worshiping Jesus for who He is. Because He is worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, just love on Him right now. Love on Jesus with your hands raised, with your voice lifted before God. This is what we're here for this morning. We're here for Jesus. We're here to glorify His name. It's not about us. It's about Him today. It's about Him today. Come on, church. Beautiful is our God. Beautiful is our God. Good is our God. Amen. He's good. He's gracious, faithful. Come on. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Come on, respond to the love of God. Respond to the love of God today. Oh, respond to His redeeming love. Respond to His rescuing love. Respond to His healing love. Come on, church. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Give you praise. Give you praise. Give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, receive the glory. Receive the praises of your people right now. Come on all over this place, church. Glorify Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, can you just have your hands raised this morning? Eyes closed, nobody looking around. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you this morning, Lord Jesus. We thank you for who you are in our lives. Jesus, my Redeemer and Savior. My righteousness, my sanctification. My security, my provider, Jesus, my healer, Jesus, my everything. My hope is in you. My eyes are on you. Praises belongs to you. Worship is yours alone. 
Lord Jesus, we worship today. We praise you today beyond, beyond the rain outside, beyond the gloomy day, beyond what we feel, beyond what we are aware of, beyond what we have been told, beyond what we think about ourselves, beyond what we have done. Jesus, we worship you today for who you are, for who you are in our lives. You are good. You are great and greatly to be praised. There's no one like you. There's no one as good as you. There's no one as faithful as you. There's no one as mighty as you. In Jesus' name. And we praise you for what you have done. Lord, there are so many things that we are believing for. Things we are hoping for. Things we are waiting to manifest. But Lord, wherever we are right now, in the place of waiting, thank you for reminding us you have already done so much. While we wait for what's next, we give you thanks for what all already has been, for what you have already done. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, go ahead, everybody. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise for what you have already done. Amen. For what you have already done. You have done great things already. You have done so much already. Oh, yes, God, you have been faithful. You have been good. You have been there, God, all along. We give you praise. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that the Lord will continue to teach all of us, like really all of us in this room, is that it's easier to praise God in the beginning when things are okay, when everything is fine, right? Or when finally things are made manifest. Like when our prayers are already there, the blessings are waiting for, Adana nag manifest na. It's easier to do that. But what God is teaching me and every one of us here in this room is how to praise and worship Him in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. While we wait. While we hurt. While things are not yet okay. Come on, somebody. When others are getting it, and somehow, you know, orhika. Promote na ni ba, nag-succeed na ni ba, baka ni ka nag-uhulat pa. God wants to teach all of us to worship Him in the middle. Amen. Um, mas maupay mga kabagtuhan. Beautiful thing. You will appreciate the depth of our worship more. When things are not okay. And yet, you spoke to your soul and said, Why are you so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. And then you talk to your flesh. No, I'm going to get up and praise God no matter what. I'm going to worship God no matter what. I'm going to bless the Lord no matter what. Even though this is happening, even though that's happening, I'm going to praise God anyway. I'm going to still going to praise God for I know who He is, for I know what He has already done, for I know that the outcome, hallelujah, hallelujah, because God is faithful, because God is good. Because God is gracious. In Jesus' name. Amen. So right now, with, with your awareness, why don't you raise your hands for a moment? Amen. Being fully aware of where you are and what you are believing for. Go ahead and raise your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. I praise you in the middle. I praise you in the midst of what I'm going through. I praise you in the midst of what I'm feeling. I praise you in the midst of the season that I'm in. I praise you in the midst of the trial that I'm in. I know you are faithful. I know you are good. I know things are going to be okay. All is well with me. Say that with you. All is well with me. All is well with me. And when it comes to my future, it will be well. All will be well. Come on. Confess it. Declare it in faith. All will be well. 
it's just a matter of time come on all will be well and i declared it by faith in the name of jesus come on everybody in the name why don't we just give him praise right now hallelujah praise you jesus come on praise him in advance praise him in advance praise him in advance hallelujah while you wait while in the middle praise him in advance oh hallelujah praise you jesus amen amen yes lord in jesus name church do we believe that this morning do you believe that turn to someone and say do you believe that today do you believe that in jesus lord we welcome your presence in this place holy spirit we ask you right now to have it your way, Lord, in this place. Whatever you want to do, whatever you intend to accomplish in our lives, not just corporately, but individually, but whatever you have in mind for your people, for your beloved, Lord, I thank you that you would do it right here and right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, be glorified in this place. Jesus, be made known in our hearts today, even as we come around the ministry of your word. God, we acknowledge today that your word is spirit and life. Lord, let your word bring freedom in every single person's life today. Thank you for answers to the questions we have in our hearts. Clarity to the confusion that we're in. And thank you, Father God, for vision. Lord, we believe that when you speak your word, it brings picture into our hearts and minds. Thank you, Father. That imagination, our imagination today is going to be stirred up as you impart your word to us. Thank you for the anointing to preach the word, to teach the word, and the anointing to believe and receive the word today. Lord, I'm nothing, you're everything. Today, God, we need you. I'm a vessel today. But you are our everything, Lord Jesus. So we look to you. I thank you that I'm, you hide me in your presence this morning. And every one of us will see Jesus. Every one of us will experience Jesus in this place. We love you, Lord. We're careful to give you back the glory and the honor and the praise this morning. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, everybody said, Amen. If you believe that God is good, give Him a clap offering this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But if you can remain, sta remain standing for the reading of God's Word, I want us to turn to Psalm 27. To the media people, pretty much everything except I'm gonna, if I'm going to tell you uh, some specific verses, but pretty much every verse today is going to be read out of the New King James Version. So Psalm 27, verse 13. Here's the word of the Lord for all of us. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Holy Spirit, take this word and sow it into the good ground of our hearts today. Thank you for comfort, encouragement, hope that will be stirred up, and faith that will come alive. Show us what we need to see. Tell us what we need to know. Lord, speak. Your people, your servants are listening today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Thank you so much for standing up. I want to talk today about God's goodness. Fifteen people are excited about the goodness of God. Anybody else in here? Tell you something, without the goodness of God, we would not be here today. So I'm going to give you another opportunity. How many of you are excited to know, to experience the goodness of God? 
You know, we, we feel uncomfortable. We feel the pressure anytime goodness is demanded from us. Right? If people begin to expect, especially the people who look up to us, right? They begin to expect, may the expectation, may the pressure to perform and to be good and to be kind. Sometimes na burden kita. I don't know if I'm the only person. May the pabaybal din niya Today I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about you. Pretty much. We're going to talk about the goodness of God. So the spotlight is not on you this morning. The spotlight is on Jesus. Amen? Anybody thankful for that? I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let me just, at the outset, let me just impart to you three specific realities about this verse. Number one, the reality of the discouragement that is caused by ugly situations. Can I tell you right now, maaram ako, it's in Christmas season, adin na kita makapagtuwan hiton season nga masaring ka, the best time of the year. But believe it or not, there could be people right now in this room who may be going through a not so good situation. Ay, duhala ka bubus, makapagtuwan. So there could be things that's causing you to get discouraged or disappointed about life and situations. That's a reality in the life in which we live. Number two, the reality that the goodness of God could change it or could change those things. Do you like that reality? I know there are ugly situations, but we serve a good God. And sometimes, mga kabugtod, we don't appreciate light until there's darkness. Sometimes we are so over-familiar with the goodness of God and things until ugly things begin to happen. Di na mula na nasasabdan and ano yung patalasas? Di ba, di na mula masasabdan and kumportante in usakabutang kung waray na inihim imo paniplatan. Amen? Sometimes you just realize how valuable those things are if they're no longer around. If you're looking for them and they're nowhere to be found. So that's another reality. And this third reality, the reality that of the role of faith in turning things around for our good. I would have lost heart. Yes, there's a reality that ugly things can happen. If I had not believed, praise God for the power of faith. Praise God that, amen. Praise God that, things can be turned around because God is good and the tool that God uses to turn things around is your faith in His goodness. Your faith in His goodness. Not in your goodness, necessarily. Amen? But let me add, because the Lord has shown this to me this morning, another reality. The possibility, the reality of the possibility and the possibility that you can experience it right here and right now. In the land of the living. Not, 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 maram kita makabot with this principle that goes, you know, in the sweet by and by, when I make it to heaven one day, sigila, maram ko din hi magaantos good kita, sigila, malalangit man lang kita, hulat hulat na lang kita at langit kay, din hi gudah kalibutan, maram naman kamo, damot ka di malasan. How many of you sometimes think that way? Iilubon mo nala, kay sigila, kay malalangit in the sweet by and by. Now, well, God, when Jesus died on the cross, not only that, he secured heaven for us. But Jesus' death on the cross provided a little heaven down here for all of us. That's why He provided healing. That's, right. That's why there's provision for restoration. That's why there's uh, provision. Because God wants us, uh, he wants us to experience His goodness. Not only when we make it to heaven finally one day, but while we wait right here, right now. I would have lost heart. There could be discouragement and ugly, ugly situations that, uh, discouraging and ugly situations, but faith can change all that. Unless I had believed that I would see, not only know about it, not only think about it, not only hear about it, but see the goodness of the Lord right here, right now, in the land of the living. 
Somebody say, Amen. Let's talk about the goodness of God today. Let's turn to this story in 2 Samuel. This will be the story that we're going to, you know, glean from as to the goodness of God. This morning, we're going to be studying together what is the kindness of God. And then we're going we're gonna to talk about how does that work? How do I experience the goodness of God? Because we need to have perspective. We need to have an understanding. We need to base it on the Scripture, brothers and sisters, not only our own assumption about the goodness of God. Because human beings, we, have, we do have our assumption of what is good. Some people would have this, their assumption of what is good because to us, our definition of what is good is this. Anything that's not evil. Basta diri evil, good neto yan. Right? Or lesser evil. Ah, basta, antusun tanal ito. Even in politics, they talk about iluban tanal niya because this one is lesser evil. Or your definition of what is good, nasirin ka, well, okay na taakon. If it's okay with me, then that's good enough. Okay na. Basta okay na ako, that's good enough for me. Right? And the general understanding of what is good. Basta diri lang ako nakakaharm. Wari lang ako gintipitsido nga tao. Okay na ito. Ayos lang ako. And the definition of the Bible of what is good. If God is not in it, it's not good. For something to be good, God must be all over it. It must be God glorifying. It must be something beneficial for you. It's going to bring blessings into your life without you losing your values in the process. Amen? And we're going to, we're going to know more about the, the kindness of God. But let's look at this story in Second Samuel chapter 9. Because let's go with a very, very, very good um, story. Amazing. Are you there? Thank you, Jesus. So, 1st Samuel. No, no, no. Sorry, 2nd Samuel. Is it there now? So, 1st Samuel. Here. First verse, just 13 verses. Now, David said, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for the sake, for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul? He's quite insistent, persistent. To whom? I may show the kindness of God. And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amil in Lodibar. Then the king, king David, and I want you to encircle this verse, underline it, highlight it. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Machir, the son of a meal from Lodibar. Six, verse 6. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Here is your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear. For I will show, surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the, the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a, de a dead dog as I? The king called Ziba. Soul, ser soul servant, and he said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him. Somebody say for him. And you shall bring in the harvest and that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, according to, the, to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, 
so will your servant do. As Mephibosheth said, the, uh, said, to the, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Twelve. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. Last verse. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem where he ate continually at the king's table. And he was slain in both his feet. What a beautiful story. You know, I, I, everything changed when I came, it came to that level of understanding, brothers and sisters, that the Bible is not just something to know or something to do, but it is indeed someone to know. First and foremost, it is someone to know. So when I read the stories of the Old Testament, I don't just read stories about like David or whoever, but I begin to look at where is Jesus in the story? Where is humanity in the story? Because the Bible is God's story. It's His history. I, get, I just get to be part of it. Amen? History is God's story. And so we are not the center, but Jesus is the center. We get, just get to be part of it. And um, there's a principle that goes when it comes to interpretation. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Nakatago ng New Testament, but New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Everything points to Jesus. In this story, as we read 13 verses, we can already say, we can already see, Haing kita David, where is Jesus, where is God here? God is speaking and God is using stories such as this, but there are layers to the stories of the Bible. You can look at the Bible and just, you know, interpret it in the light of the context based on the story, the culture during that time. But then you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you and then you find out the story behind it is the story of the gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ, God, soul of the world, that He gave His only Son. Whoever believes in Him will not perish but will have everlasting life. We're going to go back to that, but let's just understand the basics first. Let's understand the kindness of God, how it works, and how it is going to be experienced. The word kindness, the idea of kindness in the book, in, in Hebrew, is hesed. All right? Hesed. Kindness, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most outstanding qualities and attributes of God. Imagine if God is only great, God, God is only big, God is only powerful, but He's not good. God is big, but God is also good. God is great, but God is also good. It does not only show His greatness, but it reveals His kindness. The kindness of God. Somebody say amen. So let's just... Study, first of all, the idea or the concept of kindness. In the Hebrew, it is called hased. The meaning is His loving kindness and tender mercies. Some translation goes, His faithful love and loyalty. So anytime you look at the, in, the, in the Old Testament, makita ni word nga, His loving kindness, His tender mercies, His faithful love, the Greek or the Hebrew word is hased. By the way, that is the Old Testament translation or version of grace in the New Testament. So anytime you talk at, you look at, for, for example, Psalm 23, it tells us that um, His goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. You know what, what that is in the, old, in, in the Hebrew? His said will follow me. Amen? God's has said denotes persistent and unconditional tenderness, kindness, and mercy. A relationship in which he seeks after man with love and mercy. He said expresses both God's loyalty to his covenant and his love for his people. Along with the faithfulness to keep his promises. Wow. Somebody say wow. You find verses in the scripture that talks about the goodness of God. But the highlight, the, the statement that is the complete statement about the goodness of God is this. The Lord is good. Period. Full stop. The Lord is good. He doesn't just do good. He will not just be good. He is good. That's who He is. That's His attribute. That's His character. That's part of His nature. He is good. Somebody say, God is good. His goodness, get this, 
write this down, is not based in who you are or what you do or what you have done or what you will do. But His goodness is based on His nature, His character, His attributes. It's who He is. Come on. It's who He is. Si Pastor Ram, na baro in goodness ni Lord. Praise the Lord via the fruit of the Spirit. One of the fruit is kindness. Tikang kan Lord, tikang Holy Spirit that shows you the Holy Spirit reveals the very nature of God. One of the fruits and Holy Spirit is kindness or goodness. So we borrow from that. We can only give as we are able to receive from the Lord first. Amen? Borrowed na goodness. Pagbagay on glory, we just reflect the glory of God. We're like the moon that reflects the glory or the light of the sun. We are not the source. We are reflecting it. The kindness of God flows through us. Amen? Are you with me today? The goodness of God. This is very important that we understand this. If we miss this basic, then we don't understand truly and we will not be able to appropriate, receive, experience the goodness of God because we will end up trying to work for it. Come on. We will end up trying to earn it. We will end up trying to perform for it. The goodness of God is not based on me. The goodness of God is based on who He is. So kung pastor ang maubusan ng goodness, it's because I'm not the source of it and it's not Basically, my nature, I just borrow from the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm growing in the knowledge of Him. And I'm growing to become more like Jesus. But the Lord doesn't just do good. He is good. If it's who you are, you don't run out of it. If it's who you are, it's inexhaustible. If it's who you are, it's not based on whether it's raining or it's hot outside. or Amen. Kung may sweldo na, kung may bonus na. You know, it's not based on whether the war is over somewhere or kunaglino kaminda now is not based on the goodness of God is consistent because it's who He is. If you get it, say amen. amen. The Lord is good. So where are we in the equation, ladies and gentlemen? I am merely you and I are merely a recipient, recipient and beneficiary of the goodness of God. I was thinking about it, just meditating upon it. The kindness of God is one of the most amazing to me. It amazes me. It's disarming because once I expose myself in the goodness of God, it, I, I began to drop all my defenses. You know, you know how it is when people just want to love you, right? And then sometimes, not, and then, but then if, if you know that you're in the atmosphere of kindness, you drop your defenses. All of a sudden, my saying, okay. It's disarming. The word, it, it's disarming. The love of God is amazing. It's disarming. It's liberating. It sets you free. It sets you free from your, our insecurities and fears, and fears and all that. It's so, it's so amazing. The goodness of God is simply amazing. It's comforting. It's comforting. When you fail, you know that what you need is the Kindness of God. Not what you deserve, because what you deserve during that season of failure is punishment and judgment and condemnation. But then, since God doesn't just give us what we deserve, but He gives us what we do not deserve, which is the grace of God, the Old Testament version of that is has said, which is God's loving kindness and tender mercies and faithful love. Jesus being the express image of God displayed kindness. In the story, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of Jesus while he was walking on earth. The kindness of the Lord. One, one woman was caught in the act of adultery. According to the law, she'll be stoned to death. Jesus said, neither will I condemn you. Go and see no more. He gives hope to people. There's this woman who was trying to shy away from, from society. Obviously, she, was, she, was, uh, she, was, uh, she had a reputation. She had five husbands, and the one she was with was not even her husband. And so, to time, to draw water from the well at a time when there's nobody there. In other words, this woman is trying to shy away. Na iwas han mga chismis. Han unang panahon, believe it or not, may dana mga kabugtuan mga natawag ito niya mga marites. And Jesus came along, while others don't 
don't, don't want to talk to her, Jesus wanted to talk to, him, to her and gave her hope. And you know the story of how this woman was restored because of Jesus. You, you'll find, we, uh, last, week, last Sunday we talked about those stories of people who, in the natural, in the natural, you would probably raise your eyebrow, Master, you know, 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 denying Jesus three times, you know, you know, but Jesus, a few days after, restored the man, not only restored him, but entrusted him with ministry, and on the day of Pentecost, 50 years after Jesus, death on the cross, there was the, the Pentecost, who, who was the person who preached, and 3,000 got saved, the one who denied Jesus three times, he preached with power and anointing. And one of the things that he said, you, Jewish people, you, you rejected him. You rejected him. He just rejected Jesus three times also. Sometimes, Amazing, right? How God could restore people. Out of the kindness of God. How many people, how many stories, personalities in the Bible that had the Lord helped, but they did not necessarily deserve? It wasn't based on them. It was based on the kindness of God. Oh, by the way, the death of Jesus on the cross, that His death for the sake of humanity. Humanity, a, a rebellious humanity. Humanity that turned their back from Him. And yet, Jesus died on that cross for all of us. Somebody say, the kindness of God. Hallelujah. Let me just say something about the kindness of God so that we will draw the line of distinction between what we think kindness is and the kindness of God. The kind, kindness is not political in its approach and motive, but real, authentic, sometimes even controversial because of its expression. It does not demand that you repay it. It simply wants to bless and help. That's the kindness of God. It does not want attention. If your kindness is something political, you will have somebody to take a video and post it because you have an ulterior motive. But, but the Lord, the kindness of the Lord, it, it doesn't want attention or validation. He's not doing it for you to validate Him. Question, how do we experience that kind of kindness? The fullness of God's kindness because in Ephesians 2 verse 7, it talks about in the ages to come. After what Jesus has already done for us, which is wonderful, already more than enough. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 7, while talking about, Paul was talking about what God has already done. He said, so that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. God is simply saying, you think I'm done? No, I'm not yet. I still got so much to give to you. I still so much to impart to you. I get, still got so much to show you. I still got so much. If, it, if it's not done during your lifetime, wait, I'm going to do it to your sons, your children, and your children's children. <laughs> Hallelujah. The kindness of God. Praise God for the kindness of God. How do we experience it? Just two things today that you need to wrap around, your, your mind around with. Brothers and sisters, two things about the kindness of God and how to experience it. You experience the goodness of God. And we're going to refer to the story again this way. It doesn't just happen because, but it happens in spite of. Two things. How to experience the kindness of God? What is the kindness of God? How do we experience it? How do you go deeper into it? Well, the kindness of God, just basic things you need to understand about the kindness of God is this. You experience it because, because of, and you experience it in spite of. Because of, in spite of. Let's say, it, say that together. One, two, three, go. Because of, in spite of. Let's go to the first verse and the last verse of the story. First verse, 2 Samuel 9 verse 1. Very simple. Look at this. David, is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for the sake of whom? For the sake of Jonathan. David is trying to show kindness to someone in the house of Saul. Who is Saul? 
the one who nearly killed him, the one who looked for ways and means to try to kill him. Years and years, he's been hiding in caves and deserts. You know why? Because Saul was trying to kill him out of his insecurity against David. So nothing in David. Is there anyone in the house of Saul? Well, I don't want to. What in the house of in the house of what? In the house of who? In the house of Saul. The one who wanted to kill you? Yeah, that I may show kindness for the sake of Jonah. Who's Jonathan? He's the prince, the son of King Saul. Jonathan in 1 Samuel 18 cut a covenant with David. The prince decided, I'm going to have a covenant with someone who's an ordinary person, basically. What do you see in this story, by the way? It's, a, it's not just about the story of David and Saul and, and, and Jonathan. This is a picture of God wanting to show kindness to us. David here is like speaking, you know, in first verse, he's saying, is there anyone who is left in the house of Saul that I may show kindness? Him kindness for the sake of, for Jonathan's sake. So it appears like David is just trying to be kind. But then in the next verses, I think in verse 3, and he said, is there, is there anyone else? I think verse, verse, no. Yes, verse 3. Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? First of all, hey David, when he, was, when he was talking to himself, when he was just thinking about this thing, I want to show kindness. When he was talking to someone, he said, I want to show the kindness of God. He knows his doctrine. He knows his foundation. This is not about me. This is about the kindness that comes from God. And by the way, here in this story, David is like speaking. He's a picture of God the Father talking and saying, is there someone out there? The house of Saul speaks of humanity. The rebellious, unworthy, undeserving humanity. He said, is there anyone out there that I can show my kindness to for the sake of my son, Jesus? For the sake of my Jesus. Is there anyone out there in the world that I can show my kindness to for the sake of Jonathan? The first thing that we will understand and learn from this is this, verse 1. Kindness of God is experienced because of. There is a because of to the kindness of God. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen randomly. That's why Ibaato na frustrate because we think that it's just going to happen randomly. Lord, ikaw nang bahala. Lord, so We don't understand that there's a foundation when it comes to experiencing, there's, there's, there's a principle when it comes to experiencing the kindness of God. It doesn't just happen randomly. God is saying, for the sake of, because of. Amen? So let's talk about the context of how the Lord allows us to experience His kindness. Number one, the kindness of God is experienced through the context of covenant. Context of covenant. Right? For the sake of Jonathan. For the sake of Jonathan. Who is Jonathan? Jonathan was the prince, the son of Saul that David had a covenant with. Jonathan the prince is a picture of Jesus making a covenant with us. David was an ordinary person. Jonathan was the prince. And who initiated the covenant? Jonathan. Look at this. In, in 1 Samuel 18, if I just, just go, go there for a moment. Now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was neat to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Wow, what a picture of the love of Jesus for us. So Saul took him that day and would not let him go to go home to his father's house anymore. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Wow. And Jonathan took off the robe. What? Is, is, isn't that a picture of Jesus giving us his robe of righteousness? That was on him and gave it to David with his armor. That's the word of God. Amen. Even to his sword and his bow uh, and his belt. These are, these are the Ephesians 6 talks about the, 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 uh, the armor of God, which is basically the message of the gospel as well. Amen. And so that is a picture of what happened. So 
When David said, Is there anyone out there in the house of Saul that I may show kindness to for the sake of or because of Jonathan? This is a principle that tells all of us, if you want to experience the kindness of God, you need to understand it happens, it is experienced in the context of covenant. So it's a statement that you need to know. Write this down. God loves the world. For God so loved the world. Listen, God loves the world. But He doesn't have a covenant with everybody in the world. Why? Because not everybody in the world believes in Jesus. Not everybody in the world receives Jesus. Right? Are you with me? The kindness of God is experienced in the context of covenant. That's what you need to understand, church. So let, let's just go through. I want to show you this to you so that makita natin mga kabugtuan may DNA foundation. Look at this in Ephesians 2. No, Ephesians, Ephesians 1. Look at this. Tikang in verse 1, just, just quickly, if we can just do this quickly. Everybody look at the screen for a moment. For Paul, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus, faithful in Christ Jesus. I want to see in the context of God. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Three, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place, underline that two words, in Christ. The context of covenant in Christ. You cannot just say, I'm blessed with all kinds of spiritual blessings. You have a relationship with Jesus. Have you received Jesus Christ in your life? Are you with me, church? In Christ, just as He chose us, where? In Him. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Four, five. Having predestined us to adoption as His as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the pleasure of His will. Six. To the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Seven, in Him. Come on. We have redemption through His blood. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you're not redeemed. You're not saved. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of whose grace? His grace. Eight, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Nine. Having made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself. Ten, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, which both are in heaven, which are on earth, where? In Him. Somebody say covenant. Come on, somebody say covenant. Right. Twelve. In Him also, eleven, we have also obtained an inheritance in Him, in Him, in Him. Being predestined according to the purpose of Him who may, works all things according to the counsel of His will. Twelve, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. In Him, you also. Are you seeing this, church? He, we, need, we need to get our doctrine found. We, we need to get ourselves founded in the doctrine, in the Word of God. In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, a promise. So you are sealed. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of purchased possession to the praise of His glory? 15. Therefore, I also, Paul said, after I heard of your faith in the Lord, our Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What is his prayer? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Why? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know that what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, in us. Not for the saints, in us. That what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the work of his mighty power. Do you love this? This is better than an outline. I tell you, outline is good. It gives you perspective. But this one, it gives your, your foundation strong. It makes your foundation strong. He worked in Christ, which He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places. 21. Far above all principality and power that might and dominion in every name that is named, that not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. 22. And He put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church. You and I which is His body, the fullness of Him, who fills all in all. Wonderful. Promises of God. Experience in Christ. 2 Corinthians 1.20 
2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, look at this. This is good. This is good. In the context of covenant, it's very important. For all the promises of God. Where? Come on, where? In Him are yes. You don't just say the promises of God are yes. Where? In Him. And in Him, amen. You better be sure, church, that Jesus is part of your equation. That everything is considered in Christ. Amen? If you, have, if you don't have Christ, if you're not in Christ and Christ is not in you, that's probably the reason why you're looking at other people experiencing it and you're only wishing that you experience it yourself. God wants to show His kindness to you. Where? In Christ. So that in Him, in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding greatness of His power, of His love, and His kindness and grace toward us in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, covenant. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This in Christ realities needs to be understood. So here's the power of covenant. When we talk about the kindness of God, He said, Old Testament has said, right? Has said. One of the meanings is God's faithful love and loyalty. Telling all of us today, I'm going to be true to my promise. I'm going to be true to the covenant that I have made with you. So what God is saying to all of us, sigurado that the kindness of God is going to be experienced by you and me. Because we are in Christ Jesus. Amen? And God made a promise, I will be faithful to it. I'll be faithful to it no matter what. I'll be faithful to, my, faithful to it no matter what you're going through, no matter what situation, the situation you're in. I will be faithful. It's not dependent on you. It's dependent on Him. Somebody say amen. So here's the power of covenant. Just quickly, the beneficiaries are guaranteed protection and provision even long after the parties are gone. Where's, where's Saul? Dead? Where's Jonathan? Dead. And yet the power of covenant is still working. Are you here, church? Where's Jesus? Jesus died on the cross but now lives and sits at the right hand of God. But the power of covenant is still working. When it comes to our prayer, how do we pray? Father, in whose name? In Jesus' name. That is covenanting. It's called covenant. You are transacting spiritual business via covenant. You're not even thinking about how good you are, how qualified you are to access the presence of God. You're merely thinking about Christ has already done for you. You are in Christ. Christ is in you. I'm a child of God on the basis of what? Of this relationship, of this covenant that I have with Jesus Christ. When we come and enter into the throne room of grace in worship, what is the basis why we access the presence of God with boldness? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Whose blood was shed? Not your blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Last time I checked, I was not crucified. Neither You have not been crucified on the cross, but Jesus was crucified for us. John 15, you, you find this, abide in me. I, I, you, I'm, the bron I'm, I'm the vine, you are the branches. You know, you ask anything in my name. When Jesus is talking about these things, these are covenant realities. Are you here, church? Call the Father in my name. All the promises in Him are yes. What is, what is God telling all of us? I'm getting ready to bless people. I'm getting ready to show my kindness to people. Is there anyone out there that I can show my kindness to for the sake of? Come on, for the sake of. Come on, for the sake of. Have you ever been invited to parties, special events, but you are not necessarily a friend of the host, but you're a friend of the friend of the host? Have you been given access to special places and events and spaces? Nakasaring ka, wow, gusto mo picture. But alalaika. Amen. We're blessed. We experience the goodness of God. Second point. We experience the kindness of God because of our connection with Jesus. Mephibosheth, which is a picture of all of us, lame in many ways, had experienced the kindness of David. Not because of Mephibosheth, but because of the father of Mephibosheth, who happens to be a friend 
and a covenant partner of David. His father was long gone, but the power of covenant lives on. Anybody thankful for Jesus? Come on, anybody thankful because of Jesus? Asunod nga maka-experience ka promotion. The next time you experience promotion, the next time you experience an open heaven, the next time the paycheck came, comes, ayun naman kayo ngalimot. Pag siring, Lord, it's because of you. The last time I check, I'm not even deserving of a job. The last time I checked, God, because of my failures, I was not even that trustworthy to begin with. Somebody say, because of Jesus. One of the things you need to experience about experiencing the kindness of God is this. It's not about your efforts. It's not about you trying to earn it. Number one, it's based on His character. Number two, it's based on covenant. Number three, it's because of Jesus. Because of your connection with Jesus, you're connected to the God who is goodness, full of goodness, wants to demonstrate goodness. Amen? Your access to the table is not necessarily because of you. Next perspective you need to see about experiencing the kindness of God is this. First is because of the second po- point is in spite of. Somebody say in spite of. Look at verse 13. The first verse and the last verse. First verse. Last verse. Look at the ver- last verse. In spite of. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem for he ate continually at the king's table. Stop. Stop. Wow. Diba atun time? Everybody look here. Haton tayo makakasaring ka sana all. Right? Makakasaring ka, wow, grabe ka bless. Oh, grabe ka bless. Ah, grabe ka bless itong atawad. That, that person is so blessed to be given that opportunity, that access, that kind of provision, that kind of welcome, that kind of recognition. He ate continually at the king's table and he was lame. In both his feet. Why would the Bible show us this detail? Why? Bisan at ang summit ni mo success. At to kana na lingkod kana ang table of the king. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the king's table. This is not just anybody's table. This is the king's table. You've been given access access to that place in spite of the fact, in spite of the fact that you are imperfect. Two things about Mephibosheth that is obvious early on when he was standing and before David, he said, why would you show this kindness to, this, to a dead dog as I am? We know he's suffering from insecurities, inferiority. Sino aton may pa mga insecurities? alsa ni kamot, that's your insecurity. Alsa ni kamot, mga kapot, because all of us, we do have a measure a degree of insecurity about ourselves. Piper haaton din may mga imperfections. Can I just see the hands of the... An ibahi yung mga kabugtuan halay showing pride, that's an imperfection too. You're not raising your hands. Come on, raise your hands because we all have imperfections. How many of you are thankful that we get to, the seat, to sit at the king's table? We get to access the presence of God. Psalm 23, he said, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of my enemies. God prepares a table. God, because of Jesus, we've been given access to the very throne of grace. We've been given access to the very presence of God. We have communion. We remember Him. What is that intimacy with God? Here we have a relationship, a covenant with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the maker of heaven and earth, Jesus, the Son of God, who reigns. Who reigns forever and ever. We have been given access to His table. And yet, the highlight still, in spite of the access, there's no denying there are insecurities, there are imperfections. But thanks be to God, in spite of. Come on, somebody. In spite of. Come on. In spite of. 
the imperfections and the insecurities in spite of all that I don't have to be perfect to experience it I don't have to try to be perfect to experience it I just have to I just have to accept the fact I just have to recognize the fact that I've been given access God did not wait for me to be perfect God did not wait for me to be truly really really faithful God did not wait for me to be all good to experience his goodness he tells me I'm giving you access because of Jesus because you accepted my son because you embraced my son here come here sit at my table receive my blessings experience my abundance and my faithfulness and my goodness in spite of in spite of pwede ka mo manindog mga kaputan in spite of in spite of in spite and I encourage everybody today Never forget, never forget that we experience the goodness of God because of Jesus and in spite of our imperfections. How good is God? How good is God? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead and raise your hands and just say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a story in, in Matthew 20 about the parable of the vineyard workers. Just quickly, I, I just want to remind you of this story. This is beautiful. Remember the time when the master called in? He, was, he looked, the Bible says that very early, he looked for people to work for his vineyard. And the workers are to be, to be paid with a denarius, which is a day's wage. So he called in some people who started at the sixth hour early in the morning, 9 a.m., and some at the ninth hour, 3 p.m., and some to work for him at the 11th hour, 5 p.m. So 9 a.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m. He told them, okay, are you willing to work for my vineyard? They said, yes. How much is going to be the wage? How much is the wage? He said, a day's wage. A denarius, which means that a day's wage. Okay, sure. So they work. Some start nine, and then um, some others started at 3 p.m., but pagkakulop, mga kabugtuan, look, look here. In the afternoon, nakita niya dito ang ibang awaray trabaho. He said, what are you guys doing? He said, we're, we're doing nothing because no one hired us. We're doing nothing because nobody hired us. And then he said, come work for me. At the 11th hour. Who in his right mind, in the natural, masaring ka nga, at 5 a.m. you will hire people to work for your vineyard? 9 a.m. some people came in and that's fine. So they all agreed, you work at this point, particular time, you're going to receive this wage. And they agreed. But then he called in some people. He said, yeah, are you willing to work? Because you're not doing anything. They said, sure. 11th hour, 5 p.m., again, hire the Lord and Master. And in the end, an una pagod niya against Wilduhan, the first person who got the salary was the one who worked at the 11th hour. 5 p.m. He said, come here. And a day's wage and ginhatag was the the same amount that the people who work at 9 and 3 p.m. received. Hatag okay, here. And then all of a sudden, they began to protest. Nothing. Wait, wait, wait a minute. That, that's unfair. That's unfair. Why? And the, the master said, why? Because how come this guy worked for you at 5 p.m. at the 11th hour and then he gets the same amount of salary that we're supposed to have. We started earlier than him. Now, second master, have we not agreed that if you're going to work from a vineyard, you're going to receive this much amount? He said, yes, we agreed. But it's unfair because the, the other guy started late. 11th hour na, pagsulod niya, gimbles niya mo, pareha sa amon. This is not fair. Now, no. This is not about fairness now. When it, comes to your, when it comes to your issue, it, it has to do with fairness. When it comes to this one, it has to do with my kindness. I was, not, I was not unfaithful to you. I was not unjust to you because I paid you based on the agreement that we had earlier. So many of us, just like the older brother of the prodigal son, we think, wait a minute, how come the prodigal son gets to be blessed? I mean, he lost everything. He, he, he went away, ran away from home. This guy don't deserve anything. Because they're thinking about fairness. So many of us, 
We struggle in experiencing the kindness of God because we're trying to earn it. We're, we base it on our performance. We base it on what I have done. The older brother said, I almost killed myself trying to serve you here. But you did not kill me. The fatted calf. God must be thinking, Adi ka man lang, close ka man ako, pero man hindi ka mga church, nabasa ka niyo yung Bible, you're always here. You see some people just came in, bago lang ang karawat ka ng Lord, yung bless ni Lord, yung maupay. Tapos ikaw, may iha ka na nagsiserve ka, Lord, how come God, Adi lugod mga bago, I'm more spiritual than Him. You begin to compare yourself with other people, and you lose sight of the very kindness of God. This is not about fairness, just about fairness. God is just. But ladies and gentlemen, God is kind. There is something beyond fairness. There's, come, come thing, there's something beyond all these things. This is the kindness of God. Kung mag-decide ngayon, hey Lord, ngayon, bless niya, Adi, nga bago pala. What is that to you? Yung bless ka niya, the way God wants to bless you. But if the Lord will bless somebody who just came in at the 11th hour, do not question God's kindness because you cannot take it away from Him. Do you believe He's kind? Listen, not only at the time you deserve it, but even at the moment you don't deserve it. Say, Lord, I'm not supposed to be blessed, but I look to your kindness. More than anything else, I look to your kindness, Lord Jesus. Church, think today. Meditate up today. Ponder today upon the kindness of our Jesus. He is good. He is kind. Not only because of, but in spite of. I give you praise, Lord Jesus, today. I give you praise, Lord Jesus, today. Hallelujah. God is saying to someone in this place this morning, I am not done with you yet. I am not done with you yet. God says, I want to, ex I want to exceed your expectation. I want to pour out my blessings upon you. God is good. God is kind. He is faithful. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. As we close, as I close this morning, one of the things that we need to begin to understand even as we close this morning, as I was having a conversation, I think, with Joe Phil a few days ago. Kundiri kita careful, mahabogtuan. Sometimes situations and circumstances could blind us. Nga nalingkod na nga ni kita ng lamisahan Diyos. Nga natong gingkikinita, nga natong tiil our imperfections. And yet we've forgotten the fact that we're already sitting at the king's table. Could it be that so many of us are already in, already being embraced by the Lord, receiving protection, provision, preservation, blessing, love, all these wonderful blessings. And yet, one moment of trial, one moment of pressure, one moment of waiting, we have forgotten the fact and we are now fixated on what is not working and we have forgotten what, what already worked for us. I want to encourage everybody don't lose sight of the king's table just because some things are not working in your life. I tell you right now, God has already done so much for him to try to prove to you that he can do it again. Look up. Look beyond your situation. Trust the kindness of God. If you don't see His hand, trust His heart for you. Trust His heart for you. He is kind. Yes, Lord, listen. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am. Oh, I will sing the goodness of God. Sing it to Jesus all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able. Oh, I will 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, for this revelation of your kindness. God, not only for us to think about, but for us to expect. Expect your kindness. Expect to experience your kindness. Lord, ginabrihan naman naman mga kinabuhi. We open our hearts to you. We open our lives to you. Lord, refresh our lives once again by another dose, a fresh dose of your kindness. Show us, cause us to experience it. Open doors for us. Line up situations. God, just do something amazing. Something, Lord God, that will quicken our hearts, quicken our lives once again. Make us realize how good you have been and how good you still are in our lives. We love you, Jesus. We honor you today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Give him a clap offering. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray that you were blessed by today's message. Here are some ways how you can continue to give your tithes and your offering here in New Life Tacloban. Thank you, church, and God bless.